So when I mentioned exposure, I mentioned the aperture. And the aperture tells us how much light is coming through the lens to get to the sensor. If there's a lot of light around, you can, don't need so much light coming in. A bit like the pupil of your eye. So during the day or when it's bright, your pupil becomes smaller because otherwise you'd have too much light coming in and everything would appear overexposed. At night time or when it's dark, it opens up to allow more light in. Same thing happens with the aperture on this. There's a mechanism for allowing the light to come in and it makes a hole bigger or smaller in the lens. So you've got the aperture here and it's measured in f-stops. The smaller the f-stop number, such as this camera here is on f2.8 or rather this lens, is wide open. It's allowing a lot of light in. I can stop it down and you can go up to f4, 5.68, in this one, it goes all the way up to at least f22, which is a very small hole, stopping the light coming in. Now, that's really great, but it doesn't only control the exposure. The thing about changing the aperture is it also changes what's known as the depth of field. That's how much is actually in focus. So if I focus on something with the aperture wide open, it, what it does is only that will be in focus and things in front of it or behind of it will be out of focus. And depending on how far away they are, the more out of focus they'll look. So you've probably seen photographs, particularly portraits, where they take a photograph of someone and their background is out of focus, which gives a very nice look. But there are times you want more to be in focus. And that is particularly relevant when you're actually videoing someone and you're interviewing them. I like to go for slightly closed down to say f5.6 or f8. That way if they move a bit backwards and forwards like this, as they're talking, if they lean in, they tend to stay in focus as well. So the aperture does the exposure and the depth of field. So I've got a little setup here. Let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so what I've set up here are two cameras. One's a box brownie, one of the earliest cameras, and I've also got a little cine camera in the background and I hate to admit it, but I did actually use the cine camera, which is kind of showing my age a little bit. Nevertheless, I've got the box brownie nearest the camera, my camera that I'm using now, and I've got the cine camera slightly further away. And I focused in on the box brownie and you can see that is sharp. My lens is wide open. I'm at f2.8. That means it's allowing a lot of light in through the lens. What I can do is stop down the lens to a higher f-stop, which makes the hole in the lens smaller. So let's see what happens when I do that. So I'm now moving up. That's 3.2, 3.5, f4, f4.5, 5, 5.6. Can you see as I'm increasing it, I'm now up to f11. The cine camera is sharper and I'm going to keep going. And this is really important because if you're videoing something you want to determine, sometimes you want things out of focus in the background. So here I am on F22. In case you're wondering, I've got this set to auto ISO, so it's keeping the exposure the same. So let me just go back. So there, lots of things would be in focus, but you don't always want that. So let's go back to F2.8. That's great nice look and it can be a bit artistic and if you're filming somebody that might be what you're after so they might be standing in front of some books or something else you don't want the books sharp but you want them to it just adds a bit to it however this does not give a lot of room for maneuver if the person moves a bit backwards and forwards and a little bit of a safety margin so i'm just going to move it to f5.6 you can see it got a little bit sharper there I'm just going to go up to f8. Now that's where I normally sit and I tend to find it gives me a little bit of latitude with their movement and keeping things in focus. So let me just go back to f2.8. You can see that the camera in the background is well out of focus. f8, it's starting to come into focus and give me a little bit of latitude when I'm videoing. So as you can see, the aperture has a big effect on the focus and also affects the exposure too. You want to get a balance between the two. Sometimes you can't shut it down because there's just not enough light. So you need to experiment a little bit 
The great thing is, is you can see the outcome on digital cameras as you take the photograph, or rather as you take the video, and the same with camcorders as well. So you can really experiment. To really see it, you need to see it on a bigger screen. These are useful, but they're a little bit small, and quite often a lot of things will look in focus anyway. So I suggest going away, try setting something up like this and just experimenting. You might want someone to sit in and just see what happens when you change the background so that it's out of focus as well, which can have a very nice effect. So there's some things that you can try with your aperture.